What are the biggest lessons you have learned in the corporate world? The multinational corporation I work in has a defined structure of employees. Every manager has around three to four direct reportees. Every director has around three to four managers reporting. Every vice president has three to four directors reporting. Every president has three to four VPs reporting and so on. The other day, I was stuck at some code and since manager was on leave, I approached director for the rectification. To my surprise, her understanding about the whole subject and business was marvelous. I went back to my seat but the minions in my head were still in that situation. How often is one so clear about rectifying a random doubt coming out of the blue? How in the holy world could she be so attentive and structured? I thought for a while and realized this fact. I am working on just a single project. My manager has his eyes on three projects of his direct reportees and one of his own. So, four. The director has her head at least in 16 projects. Keep multiplying it with four to only flabbergast by the amount of knowledge and clarity the leaders must be having. The biggest lesson? These people at the top, they are there for a reason. The path you're walking on now, they've walked the same in the same shoes, sipping in the same heat to only get more spacious, calmer and knowledgeable with time, persistence and hard work. They've worked hard to reach there. Boss just doesn't sit and rot the chair. His slash her head is in a constant merry-go-round finding the solutions and taking decisions. Respect them. 1. Never overstay your welcome. If you are not getting your due every two or three years, make a switch. Not getting appreciated for work done only means your boss takes you for granted. 2. Always stay humble. Have a good email and chat etiquette. Don't be cocky and rude because you think you are good at your job. There is always someone nicer and smarter who can do your job for half your salary. 3. Don't consider any work beneath you. 90% of the work is going to be bland and intellectually non-stimulating. Still do it religiously. Try automating or delegating. 4. Be an absolute professional. Always be on point and succinct in the meetings. Don't speak out of turn or speak over others. 5. Never undercommit and overdeliver or overcommit and underdeliver. Deliver just the right amount. 6. Be careful about whom you are going on coffee breaks with. The office is not a place to make personal friends. You are being watched and judged more than you would think. 7. Don't have an office affair. It's detrimental to your reputation. The office is just not the place for your dirty laundry. 8. You are as good as the perception others have about you. Build a solid perception. Be helpful and agile. 9. Dress well and dress smart. 10. Don't be the joker of the team. That's okay if you're not the popular guy. 11. Don't let anyone make jokes at your expense in front of your juniors. No matter how benign they are. Take that person one-on-one -on -one and tell him to back off next time. 12. Learn to showcase your work. Don't be modest and humble. Forward any appreciation from the client to your manager. 13. If you can't get another job within one month, you have a shitty network. Build a solid network with people outside your team. Help others and have them owe you one. 14. Refine your public speaking and work on personal branding. Have a robust digital footprint. Don't be that guy who has been doing the same work in the same way he used to do when he was a fresher. Bring value and meaning to your name as the years go on. 15. Lastly, you are always dispensable. I know people who used to be flown in on chartered planes to do their job back in their heyday. And one day they were simply asked to leave without notice. Corporate is a fickle world, and the dynamics are ever shifting. Make hay while the sun shines. Make money while you still can. Loyalty only means so much here. A CEO I once worked with taught me a lifetime lesson on trust. During an employee equity grant, we made a mistake and left out a woman who was on military leave. It was too late to ask for additional options, and she never would have known we had given the grant to some of our employees. When I suggested that we would have to make up for it the following year, he would not hear of it. Despite the fact she didn't know anything about the exercise, he insisted on taking from his own grant so he could give her what she deserved. His response to me was this, we will do it because it is the right thing to do. Our actions are important even when nobody is looking. Great leaders do the right thing even behind closed doors. It is what a person does in private, and not just in public that builds trust. HR is not your friend. The people who get promoted are not always the most qualified. Nepotism will get you far. Being visible with higher-ups will also get you far. 
Sometimes if you're too good at your job, you won't be able to move departments. Diversity in upper levels still has a way to go. It's very easy to get too comfortable with benefits and yearly bonuses or raises. Royalty is not valued. No one cares. My office, an IT firm. There was this guy in my team. We joined the firm together as freshers from different colleges and used to sit next to each other. During the initial days, I didn't like him much as he was just writing codes and nothing else. Every time I had to talk to him I have to ping him on Skype for business, company uses it for all internal conversations, although sitting next to him as he was so into his laptop screen. But, as the days passed I started respecting his love for his work and duties. I got fond of him and got even lucky to talk to him in person during lunch breaks and evening snacks. He even got the star performer of the quarter award. Everything was going good till that Monday. Being punctual was one of his primary habits so he was never late to office. But on that Monday when I reached office, his chair was empty. Even the office was not the same. He was fired with many others. Luminous was in the air and the office was half empty. I called him and asked to meet him after the office. He agreed. We went out in the evening to a cafe and I looked at him. He was really sad. That day I got to understand what made him the person I knew for past six months. They were the responsibilities of his family, taunts of the uncle living next door, and his own expectations. He was striving hard to become the best version of himself, to prove himself, and he was achieving that. But no one cared. Next day onwards, he started applying to other companies. He needed recommendations. So, he contacted our manager, who couldn't help praising Anubhav while he was in office, for a recommendation, but in vain. He didn't receive a reply from our manager till date. Even I asked my manager about this, but again in vain. He contacted senior colleagues from office who liked him, or at least it seemed so, to refer him to their previous companies, but only thing he could get was, I will try. He was sending tens of mails every day to different HRs, searching now for from jobs and monster but only reply he got was, apologies. We need experienced people for our roles. Everybody wants experience but the irony is, they themselves are reluctant to give one. No one cares. And I think, this is not one story, there are way too many of these types of guys in our corporates, fighting every day with everything, everyone, and specifically themselves. He is still looking out for a job. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button. When the stories run out, make sure to flip the tape over to continue. Adios amigos.